Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm proud to say you are witnessing and viewing the Ernest Facing Show. Been trying to get this gentleman on my show for quite some time, and as you would know it, my buddy Bucci put this thing together. He is uh, another friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Gary the Tiger. Boletto. Thank you. Gary, thank, thank you. you so much for being here, man. Thank you, Ernest. This yeah, is, it's a pleasure, man. This I, is I, pretty cool. I've known a lot about you for a long time. Uh, I've kind of been in the fight game, you know what I mean? And you just a little bit about you uh, where you're born etc cetera, etc cetera. that's why I said only two, three <laughs> two, three. Um, I was born in, in the Silver Lake section of Providence um, I, I lived there until I was 10 my uh, my dad passed away from cancer I lived in Coventry Rhode Island for a couple of years and my mom um, one day she bought a Kirby vacuum cleaner and she says, boys, I got a, um, this is what happened first, hold on. She bought the vacuum cleaner and she got a free trip to Florida. And she went to Florida and then came back. And when she came back, she says, boys, we're moving to Florida. Wow. And that was it, we moved to Florida. What part? Um, we lived in Fort Lauderdale Okay. first for about a six months, I think. And then uh, I had an uncle that lived um, in Cape Coral, which is right next to Fort Myers on the West Coast. Okay. And she decided to move over there. We bought a house and um, I lived there all through my high school years. And I was back in Fort to Rhode Island over the summers for the, during that time. and. After school was done, I moved back home. Excellent, excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Peg Alright TV. I float like a butterfly, but he stings like a bee. <laughs> that is the original Tiger, Gary Boletto. I'm so proud and so humbled to have him on my show. We always joke about Ali, and he is a affectionado as well. I've had Vinnie Paz sit in that chair. I've had Mr. Birchfield. Jared Tilling has all these people who you know even better than me. Sure. So, what a pleasure to have you on, man. Uh, oh, thank it's, you. It's, 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 pleasure it's, to be here with it's you. It's really been a blessing. I look at you and I think about your story and I've talked to Bucci. I call you the little engine that could because yeah. you had some things that happened to you that a lesser man with not the intestinal mm. fortitude may have melded in. What was it within you that made you want to keep on keeping on? Mm. I don't know exactly what it was, but um, after my, I, I had an injury in 2013, it was June 30th, and uh, so it's been, we had, you know, it's over 10 years now with this, with this uh, injury. I have a spinal cord injury, so I'm, I'm paralyzed from the chest down, um, and I'm considered quadriplegic. Okay. You know? So, like, you know, people think paraplegic because I can move my arms, but when you're all four limbs are affected, it's quadriplegic. Right. I can't use my fingers. I can't make a fist. I can still, like, hit somebody like this. Oh, no, I man. I, 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 I got a glass jaw, <laughs> there, man. You, you cold cocked me in the green room, man. I don't appreciate that, Gary. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this was... Uh, you know, this is a serious injury, and, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's an injury that's not temporary. It's, you know, for life, unless they come up with a cure. It doesn't seem like it. So you know, I'm just doing my best every day to, I adapted. You know, I found easier, better ways to do this. Um, I kind of feel like... Uh, well, you drove yourself here. Yeah, I, I drove. Ladies and gentlemen, I, this gentleman yeah. drove, put the camera on me. You're watching Peg RITV, I've got the great Gary Tiger Boletto on. So he drove himself here. So please don't feel sorry for this man. This man is getting it done. Uh, I just wanted to put that in. Ah, thanks. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, I just I just got a new truck a few months ago. <clears throat> you know, it's fully adapted, so I just hit the button on my chair. It's kind of like an inspector gadget, mm -hmm. all these things that I use now. But you know, I find an easier way to do do everything. You know, to just get up, getting up in the morning, um, showering, getting dressed. You know, it's a full three-hour routine for me every day. So we start at 4:30 every morning, and. Uh, I got to be at work at 7:30. I still work. I run my own business, which we'll get into. Mm -hmm. And sure. uh, that's going well. Um, but this, you know, it was tragic for me and, and my family. Yeah. So you, you actually, whenever that accident, that didn't slow you down at all. As a matter of fact, that kind of made you parlay into what you were doing. Uh, I, I think it did. I, I, I learned, I learned how to do things. You know, in a I, different, much different. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a long time to adapt. Um, you know, I was really, uh, you know, crushed in the beginning. You know, this, you know, I cried for six weeks straight. Yeah. Um, Young, vibrant, right? The height of your career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was in great shape, and there you were. I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I was retired from boxing, but I was still exercising. I was. Um, I did 47 pull-ups like the day before this happened, so I was in like tip-top shape. But we were actually, Saeed, he told me. Did he? He told me. Yeah. Oh, he I told had, me that story. That's so funny because I yeah. had him doing pull-ups with me. I said, we're Yeah, just you gonna... beat him, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. By, by double. <laughs> <laughs> now, mind you, he was a, what, six-degree black belt? Yeah, he's he's the best. He's yeah, he's the bad Taekwondo. man. Taekwondo. Uh, yeah. He's a silver, silver medalist. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he went over to Korea mm. and beat them Koreans. Yeah. And that's their style. Oh, he's... I, I have a little bit of discipline in the martial arts. Yeah. I remember the story like it was yesterday, man. Yep, he's an Olympian. Yes, he is. And he always says, Gary, you are an Olympian. I know Olympians. And you, you have everything to be Olympian. Right. You know, he says that to me. He's always said that. And you, you said, uh, Saeed, he's in uh, California now. Yeah, he's in California. I, I I spoke to him about a week ago. Is that right? Yeah. You make sure you tell him Ernest said hello. He knows I, who I am. I definitely will. Yeah. So growing up, uh, you were quite the athlete. Gymnastics, basketball, football, baseball, wrestling, mm. track. Yeah. Out of all of them, obviously, boxing. But what was your next uh, best thing that you enjoyed doing? I, I, I think I would have excelled in gymnastics, I, I think. Um, you know, I, I felt like... Knowing afterwards what I did in boxing, you know, if I put all the effort into gymnastics, mm -hmm. you know, where I, that was my first sport, you know, and I, I went from leotards to boxing gloves. Yeah, a real <laughs> man sport, huh? Yeah, yeah but, but gymnastics is, is really <clears throat> like a very difficult sport and it's, uh, you know, it takes a lot of strength, a lot of balance, a lot of, a lot of practice. I remember you know? Bart Carner and all them guys, uh, the, Mary Lou Retton. Right, Olga Corbett. Yeah, you look at the gymnasts from years ago yeah. when when I was doing it, and you look at the gymnasts today. They all look like little bodybuilders. I know they got I mean, the wide crazy. backs and the little skinny legs. Crazy, and that, that, that goes to show you it's all you know resistance training. You use your body. That's for, true. You Isometric. Don't, you don't need weights, and and my whole career boxing, I never lifted weights. Is that right? We never touched a weight. Yeah. You know, we did pull ups, push ups, sit ups. That was it. Now, did Mr. Birchfield? How you doing, Mr. Birchfield? Did Mr. Birchfield train you at all? Not train me. He's he's been my promoter uh, most of my career since my fifteenth, sixteenth fight. Right. Mm. CES. Yeah. He said yeah. he's been right there where you are, right there, Mr. Birchfield. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just, I just left him. I just left him. He gave me a pair of boxing gloves when he signed them. I was like, man, I've arrived. A great Jimmy Birch. Jimmy's been very good to me and very good to my family. Right. Um, when you look at the pantheon of boxing, <clears throat> I'm going to go just with the heavyweights. Mm. You watching Peg R A T V. I float like a butterfly and I sting like a bee. I want to hit him, but he won't let me hit him. That's the <laughs> man right there. That. He's good at Gary, that. Tiger Boletto. <laughs> what a pleasure to have him on. You people will agree. Thanks. But when you look at the heavyweights, the big boys, mm. obviously the man who I just emulated, Muhammad, mm. that's my number one guy. Give me your top three all time. Top three heavyweights? Yes. Yeah. Yours. Um, I like Ali. I like Foreman. And I like Frazier. 
Okay. Yeah, I think that that was the era. It, it was. You'll yeah. never get it like that again. Right. You know, Mike Tyson never, you know, it's like uh, the Red Sox and the Yankees. Mm. You see where I'm going with it? You got to have a nemesis. I don't right. think uh, Tyson had a nemesis. Right. You know, Holyfield for a minute until he lost half his ear. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, Tyson is definitely another fighter you, you can't not watch. You know, right. he's Holyfield. There's so many good fighters. Yeah. And we What's, can't forget Rocky Marciano. Well, I was just going to say you yeah, took the yeah. word there. Yeah, fellow can, Italian, yeah. of course. Of course you can't. You yeah, can't, cannot so. forget that. So, yeah, I understand now that uh, you were on the contender. Right. And that was very good. Uh how did oh, that you was, enjoy that? That was attitude? amazing. That was an amazing show. Um, aside from getting chosen after the tryout to be on the, the television show, um, they only picked five of the contestants' families to fly out to be on the recording for this TV show. Yeah. And I was one of the families they picked. Did uh, Manfredo? Uh, Manfredo was on season one, and I was on season two. Okay. All right, I wanted to get yeah. that right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know, not only was it was a great experience for me, it was an experience for the whole family. Um, my, my kids actually, they had to go to school and say, we have to leave for a TV show for six weeks. So we need all our homework because we have tutors there. They had tutors set up for them. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a major production. It was, I, I couldn't believe it. And uh, they, they had uh, escort take them wherever they wanted to go every day. And pretty... So your kid's name was uh, Gary, uh, Ailey, and Aiden? Yes. Yep. Okay. I did my homework. Yeah, you got it right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what was that like? So they gave you carte blanche, you know what I mean? They had tutors for your kids. I mean, yeah, yeah. That, that well, well I, I was in, I was in the, uh, the, I guess, loft with, with all the fighters, you mm -hmm. know? So they were doing their own thing, having fun while we were in there suffering. Right, you know that's right. part of <laughs> training. Well, that's right. And recording, it was it was it was a great experience. It was a great time, and uh, you know I made a lot of a lot of great friends from yeah. being on that show. Tell me about Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams. Um, that was done by a you know local um, movie maker uh, Eric Latek. Um, it was an incredible movie. Um, the movie was finished and um, they had a big premiere and after the premiere I went on that TV show then after the TV show I kind of gave my rights to the contender for, for uh, reality TV for um, documentary or something like that so it was five years before um, that director, that filmmaker, maker could actually um, film me again. Yeah. So Sweet Dreams was about. It was about a boxer and a bookie, you know, from Rhode Island, and how we met, and how uh, I influenced his his life and his train of thought, and you know, um, and made him into a better person. Excellent. Excellent. It's called Sweet Dreams. You're watching Peg RITV. I got the great Gary Tiger Boletto on here. I'm gonna give a shout out to Bucci there in the audience. I told you, Bucci, I put you to work. And we're gonna give you a credit too. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this as much as I I've been trying to get this gentleman for a while. Like I said, I've got Jared, I got Mr. Birchfield, I've had Vinny Paz, and uh, you, you would be the final piece to it. And uh, really, really appreciate you for coming on. So you did not stop. You just said, okay, so I had this little thing happen to me. I'm going to parlay and I'm going to get into real estate. Yeah. Why don't you expound upon that a little bit? Yeah, I've, I've been in real estate. I've been in real estate since, uh, since I was a kid. I, I bought my, my first home at 20. I was 20 years old. Wow. And you know, I, I grew up, we, we, we come from a poor, poor home. Um, didn't have a lot. Mm -hmm. I had to work for everything I have. And um, a friend of mine at the time, who's Pat DePippo, and he sold me a house. It was a four family of Federal Hill. And he said, Gary, you, you, um, if you buy one house a year for 10 years, he says, the simpler retirement, 
buy one house a year for 10 years. You know, after 30 years, those houses are paid off. There's your retirement. It's very simple. You know, you don't need to go get a work somewhere and get a retirement that way, you know. So that was in my head for a long time. And then uh, I did a house a year for like the first five years. And then I got, you know, went, went bigger and bigger. So up at I read to, somewhere where, not to cut you off, you have bought and sold over a hundred properties. Yeah, yeah. Now it's more way over a hundred. So wow. now, now, um, like in 2013, I bought. I mean, 2012, I bought 13 homes, right before my injury. You know, the year before. So that was like probably my biggest year. Um, you know, it was just getting easier with the financing and and whatnot. So you know the. You know, it's it's easy to make money when you have money. It's this hard to make true. money when you don't. So, but it's knowing what to do. It's knowing you know where to where to go and where to stop and what to buy and what not to buy. You know, and it takes just doing it. You gotta you just gotta do it. That's you know, right. make not the be, mistakes and not be afraid. Up. And I I made some mistakes, but you know, I learned very quickly. And I did. I, I'm a carpenter. I'm a builder. So I I did a lot of the work myself. I been working around the clock since I was a kid and um, you know I, I've, I've done well mm -hmm. and I tell people don't wait to buy real estate you buy real estate and wait uh, say that again bro don't wait to buy real estate buy real estate and wait because if without doing anything you're gonna be making money residual income residual I like that ROI. Yeah, Return I know quite a bit investment. about real estate, and I and I could tell you, I could I could teach you one thing, right now to this whole audience who's watching this. There's four ways to make money when you own a piece of real estate. People don't realize, you know, because they they ah, oh, it's a headache. There's tenants. It's it's not not easy. It's there's some work behind it, but. If you have a rental property, the first way you make money with that rental property is by the, the income you make at the end of the year. You figure by the year. You can't figure by the month because you have vacancies, you have work, you have Correct. this and that. So you figure by the year income, 3000 The second way you made the money per year, the, the average appreciation is 4.5%. If you look at any 50-year period of real estate being sold, um, 1950 to 2000, if you average it out, it's going to be 4.5%, you know, right around there. So if you have a $300,000 house, 4.5%, you, you could pretty do that math pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I think that's like 13500 So every year that goes by and you appreciate 4.5%, you're making a lot of money right. without doing anything. Everybody appreciates appreciation, right? Absolutely. So that's the second way you make money. The third way you make money is because most people have a mortgage. If you have a mortgage, you pay, you pay in principal and interest. All the principal you pay is just like putting that money in a savings account at the, at the end of the year. Uh, if, if you paid 20,000 in interest and only 3,000 in principal, it's still 3000 that that you, you have in your bank account mm -hmm. in the end. Your net worth is part of it, right? So that's the third way. And the fourth way, you make money by owning real estate. And why owning real estate is the American dream is because your tax consequences. You, you, you get the best tax benefits by owning property. And when, when you own property, um, if your tax return... If you're earning seventy thousand dollars, and 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 now, all all the interest payment you paid on that mortgage is a write-off. Where when you were paying rent, that's not yeah. a write-off. Now all that interest is coming off your your gain. I like that. I like that. So not only, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Peg R A T V, the Ernest Facing Show, Gary Bellow. Not only did he knock people out, he's knocking it out in the real estate game. He just gave you four wonderful ways how you make money. My mother always said, son, people are going to always need somewhere to live. Yes. So we're going to go with that. Another wonderful thing I like, and thank you for sharing that with me. You're welcome. Uh, another wonderful thing that you're doing is the foundation, the Gary Belletto Foundation, and that is 
it was told to me some kind of way that, uh, and we'll speed this up a little bit, uh, mm. that you're, you are with gymnasiums and uh, handicap and et cetera, et cetera. Why don't you touch on that just a quick yeah, minute? Yeah, sure. So after my, after my injury, I went to a physical therapy and physical therapy is, is something you, you, it's like an automatic thing when you get an injury like mine where they, after you get out of the hospital and you go to rehab, usually they'll set, they'll set you up with, with a home nurse and you'll start physical therapy. And then after you're, you're able to get out and about, um, you could move on and do um, outpatient physical therapy. So I, I went to physical therapy and I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna go to physical therapy. I had a great physical therapist um, and you know, I, I really liked her a lot. So I ended up going to physical therapy three days a week for a year. And after a year, and I, and I trained hard just like it was a fight, just like I'm training for a fight, I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna walk again. But after that year, they said, your insurance doesn't pay, pay for this anymore because you know, you're here a year, um, the cover, your coverage ran out. So I thought, well, where am I gonna exercise? You know, I can't really go to a gym. I can't go to a regular gym because there's certain things I can't do. Uh, I need I need someone helping me to do these things. You know, when you're in the wheelchair. So you get funding. So uh, there was a gym. The only gym, the only adaptive gym that was closest to me that I we learned about was it was in uh, Canton, Massachusetts. And the name of this gym was called Journey Forward. It's specifically made for people with spinal cord injuries. Right, so I went to this gym, loved the gym, liked the people, everything. It was $100 an hour to use this gym. And there was no insurance that covered it, no, no benefit, so, and it's a two hour minimum. So if I wanna use that gym, it's $200 a day for me to use the gym. I can afford $200 a day to work out at this point in my life, but it's not fair. I don't want to pay $200 a day. Any able-bodied person can go to any gym in the state for under $50 a month, right? Under yeah. $50 a month. Why? Am, so if I, if I want to go five days a week, which I do now, that's going to be $1,000 a week, $4,000 a month to go to the gym. I'm getting the same benefit you would go for $50 a month to go to the YMCA, to go to Bally, to go to wherever. Right? But they have $10 a month, Jim, man. You know what I mean? So I thought at that, at that time, you know what, this, is, this isn't fair. This isn't right. So I, um, I, I learned about this journey forward. I did go there for a while. And I, and I, I kind of pick and chose all the machines that made the most sense economically and what mm -hmm. worked best for me. And <clears throat> I decided to start a foundation and, uh, our good friend Paul Griffin was a big help with this, um, right. getting this started. We, he, he set me up to speak to the congressman, Jim Langevin, at the time. Who's also handicapped. Yeah, and, and so he would be the right guy to talk to about this. Right. I thought I was going to get him to use the gym. I still haven't got him to use the gym yet. But you, you got that done. But we got it, we got it done. So I, I, I opened up uh, 501c3. Yeah. Um, we, we have a non-profit we, non-profit so it, it, we 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 uh, raised uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and I, I built an adaptive gym in conjunction with the Cranston YMCA so we have all that equipment in the gym we have one area section is just for people with wheelchairs excellent excellent you watching peg R A T V, the earnest facing show mr. Gary Boletto Tiger is on we're going we're gonna to do some rapid fire here now. As you look at the fight game, so we get like real quick answers now because mm. I don't want time to bite us. And uh, uh, when you look at out here now, who do you see out there as far as in the featherweight or anybody who really excites you now? Yeah, I, I watch, you know, some of the main fights, you know, and I, I, I'm always involved in the fight game. What do you think about Mayweather? I think Mayweather is a great fighter. I, I think uh, um, I don't 
He runs a lot. I don't particularly care for Mayweather. I don't yeah. like his style. Yeah, how about Sugar Ray? I was different. Um, you know, I love him. Great boxer. Great. I mean, I was on the show with, with Sugar Ray. We, we had a yeah. lot of conversations. That's right. Yeah. When you look back at uh, Alexis Arguello yeah. and them boys. Yeah, he, he's, he's a guy that kids don't even know his name today. I, like, he's, he's one of the greatest fighters, and people don't even know who That's he is. That's right. Aaron so. Hawk Pryor. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was his name, Pryor? Yeah, yeah, Hawk. Yeah. For me, when I look back on it, man, um, Ali, I'm going to all of the weight classes, was the guy. Mm. Vietnam, in the prime of his career, he said, I'm not going to do it. Philanthropy, mm -hmm. you know, him and Ali, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, who is it? Cosell, when mm -hmm. you look back on it, I mean, the clown prince. I mean, you will never see these type things like oh, that. Oh, no, no, he was, that was right. entertainment. That's right. While I got it on my mind, real quick, your boy is fighting up at Foxwood. Yeah. So, so my son, Gary, is, is a professional boxer, mm -hmm. and he's also a professional MMA fighter. Okay. Gary won a world title last year and uh, in the 180 pound class, which yeah. in, in MMA they call that middleweight. Yeah. In boxing, middleweight would be 160, but in MMA it's 185. Now he's moving down to the 170 class, which is called welterweight, and he's fighting for the same world title at, at the lower weight class. Okay. Like I say, I'm, I'm going to do the hand on you right here. Um, so we, you told us where you've been, where you're at. Real quick, where are you going? Uh, where am I going? Um, I'm a multimillionaire, and I just see things getting easier and easier. Well, there you go. Um, when, you, when you look at everything that's going on, I appreciate you for being here right now. Put that camera back on me. You've been watching Peg RITV. The wonderful, the inspirational Gary, the Tiger Boletto. He has educated us on the little engine that could, really, because he didn't stop. He kept it going. And he's floating like a butterfly and he's stinging like a bee. He's smiling all the way to the bank. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he's doing it in a humility. How much time we got left there, bro? Looks like maybe about one minute. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the host with the most, but you're also looking at the tiger. Mm -hmm. We hope that we entertained you because Gary is very inspirational. Just because he's sitting here, he's not really sitting here. Gary is somewhere everywhere, mm -hmm. and he's throwing punches in a lot of different directions. I thank you so much for gracing us with your presence, thank brother. Thank you. Uh, you have been an inspiration to many, especially for those who have had been handicapped Right. Let it be known, you don't have to be handicapped. You can actually thrive. No. And that is what you've done. I work every day. I'm not, I'm, I don't consider myself handicapped. No, you're not. No, you're, you're I, gifted. I'm not disabled because I work. You're gifted. You've been watching Peg RITV, the Ernest Facing Show. Let it be known that if this party is over, that it was well made. It's been fun, but we've got to run. Take care. The tiger. Driving around with spinning rims Walking down the street in Quan City